Sure, we could talk about the all-round game of Antoine Griezmann, the breakout performance of Enzo Fernandez, the saves by Hugo Lloris, the finishes by Julian Alvarez, but this World Cup final will be the M&M show Lionel Messi vs. Kylian Bappi. Like you, I'm in awe of these two, the way they rise to the occasion so often, so beautifully, so devastatingly. I will be at the Lusail Stadium on Sunday to watch this showdown between the 35-year-old genius of the game and 23-year-old future of football. It is bound to be a final that I tell the grandchildren about. Football can be broken down into certain categories, and below, I have compared Messi and Mbappé in them all, most of which they have mastered. For so long, we have been mesmerized by Messi's numbers scoring silly amounts of goals for his club season by season. Mbappé is up there too. Last season, 39 goals in all competitions for Paris Saint-Germain. The previous season, 42. Before that, 30. Before that, 39. It is absurd. Messi is on the verge of becoming the first player to score in the group stage. Round of 16, quarter-final, semi-final and final in a World Cup. But Mbappé knows where the goal is, too. FIFA's YouTube channel uploaded the highlights of France's win over Poland. They entitled it, The Mbappé Show. Right back Matty Cash did not do a great deal wrong in that match, but Mbappé scored twice, one in each corner. These two equally know where the goal is and how to find it. If Messi and Mbappé and me were in a 100-meter race, we all know who would win. Mbappé would take gold, Messi would take silver, and I would take a picture with them on the podium. I don't think there is a more satisfying sight in football than Mbappé driving forward at pace. Argentina fell victim to his speed at the 2018 World Cup, when he picked up possession in France's defensive third, ran the length of the pitch past every challenger, and forced Marcos Rojo into fouling him for a penalty. We don't think of Messi as a speedster. It is his speed of thought that impresses us as much as anything. But in terms of pure leg-blurring pace, Mbappé is the speedier of the two. Though Mbappé would win that 100 meters race, if the track was littered with obstacles, and they had to dribble their way to the finish line, I would back Messi. It is Maradonian, to make up a word, in the way he stops, starts, fakes left, turns right, and uses his close control of the ball to get around any defender. There was a time when Messi might pick up possession and dribble past anyone, and everyone like that Diego Maradona copycat goal against Jetif in 2007. He has adapted as he has got older but can still beat his man. Croatia's Josko Gvardiol had a good World Cup, yet he could not stop Messi from assisting Julian Alvarez to kill that game. Mbappé is devastating in his own way. He displayed his fast feet for Randall Kolo Muani's goal against Morocco. At the 2018 and 2022 World Cups, two footballers have created the most chances. After carrying the ball forward at least 5 meters, Messi is first on 27, Mbappé is second on 22. They are both destructive dribblers, but I still consider Messi the best there is. That assist for Nahuel Molina against Holland showed Messi's vision. Most players would not have seen that pass, let alone have the ability to execute it. Yet Messi did. Naturally we associate dribbling with Messi, but he is a phenomenal passer, too. It is eye of the needle exactness. Passing is not Mbappé's greatest strength, but he is no dud with the ball. The build-up to France's opening goal against England showed he knows when to pass and who to. Messi walks. He wanders. He looks like he is having a stroll by the seaside, 99 in hand. Yet, that is not necessarily a bad thing. You could say that Messi walks better than some players run. There was an El Clasico game in December 2017 where Messi covered 5 miles over 90 minutes. The statistics said he walked for 83% of the time, jogged for 11%, ran for 5%, and sprinted for 1%. Yet he finished that game with a goal and an assist in a 3-0 win for Barcelona, at the home of rivals Real Madrid. His presence alone can distract defenders, like how Guardiol seemed preoccupied with Messi, when Alvarez ran behind to win the penalty for Argentina's opening goal against Croatia. At 35, Messi saves himself for the big moments, and the Argentina team compensate for that. It is the same with Mbappé in France. He does not track back. Some of Morocco's best chances came when their right back Akraf Hakimi made forward runs, with Mbappé not following him. These are luxury players who do not need to run from start to finish to have an impact. They are explosive when they need to be. Some footballers develop reputations for rolling around, 
diving, flopping, dropping. But Messi is different. If he wants to keep the ball and stay upright, he will do so. Defenders like Guardiol can give Messi enough opportunities to take the easy option and drop down for a free kick. But more often than not, he will stay on his feet. If we can make one criticism of Mbappé, it is that I think he can milk challenges and simulate, as we saw against Morocco. When Argentina lost to Saudi Arabia, they needed Messi to save them and he did. It feels as if we have seen a different Messi at this World Cup. He is showing his emotion, never more so than after that Holland win. I think fans like to see that fire. The Wout Weghorst spat. The Louis van Gaal confrontation. It is different to the introverted chap we have long considered him. Argentina looked to Messi as their leader. Mbappé is still young, he is only 23, but France turned to him as the go-to guy with stardust sprinkled in his boots. Imagine if they did not have Mbappé going into this final, they would be panicking. He is the man for France, as Messi is for Argentina. Karim Benzema is reportedly furious with France manager Didier Deschamps and has no plans of flying out to Qatar for the World Cup final. The Real Madrid striker was ruled out of the tournament before it had begun after suffering a thigh injury in their first training session in Doha. Spanish publication Liberated Digital have claimed that Benzema is unhappy with the treatment by Deschamps, who is claimed to have sent the striker home after his injury, while has also annoyed the Ballon d'Or winner, with his comments made in a press conference. Benzema reportedly needed just three days of treatment at Real Madrid's training facility, before he went on vacation, and has already recovered from the injury. Deschamps appeared to be irked as he was asked if Benzema could feature in Sunday's final with Argentina. He closed his eyes and puffed his cheeks, before saying I don't really want to answer that question, and letting out a smile as he quickly said. Next question. It's said that Benzema has no intention of going to the final in Qatar, despite the fact that he is still a registered member of the squad, and would be a world champion, if France retain their trophy from 2018. Part of his frustration with Deschamps is that he reportedly did not leave the camp by his own free will and was sent off by the manager. After seeing that Benzema wasn't recovering from his muscular discomfort, Deschamps reportedly hold him. What a pity Kareem that you have to leave. The 34-year-old felt that Deschamps did not want him and had received the message. Upon suffering the injury, it had been felt that he could miss three weeks of action. Benzema is already back in training however, and on Thursday, he played a friendly for Real Madrid against Legains and had no kind of physical problem during the match. As reported by El Chiringuito, Benzema took part in the match which ended in a 1-1. If France called up Benzema for the final, Real Madrid would not prevent their star man from leaving. Deschamps was asked about Benzema again in the group stages, and similarly batted the question away. Wow. Well, I'm not sure what to say. That's really not something that I'm thinking about, he said at the time. You seem to know a lot about the situation. But I haven't really been following who has been saying what. However, France have managed to rally despite their absentees, winning all but one of their games which was a 1-0 defeat to Tunisia in the group stages.